Herbert Medina, and I'm at the University of Portland. Yes, when I was young, I was pretty good at math. I wouldn't say that I was outstanding, but I had a, a bent towards it. So I was pretty good at it uh, from the time I was in grade school. But again, I wasn't really great. Uh, and I didn't really turn heads, I would say, from my teachers. That didn't happen. I didn't know I wanted to become a mathematician probably till junior year at university. So I went to UCLA as an undergraduate and my first, uh, my major was mathematics, computer science. So when I went to college, I thought I was going to be a computer programmer. And during my junior year at UCLA, I got a job tutoring math and that changed my, my uh, career trajectory. I knew immediately that what I really liked was helping students learn mathematics. So then um, it just over about a two month period where I decided, no, I don't wanna be a computer programmer. I wanna be a university professor. Yes, so I'm, I would consider myself a real analyst. So um, I did work earlier in my career that was uh, in more theoretical spaces. And the last few years, uh, probably the last couple of decades, I've focused on works, uh, problems in classical real analysis. So, Literally, I mean, I studied the real number line. So it seems very simple, you know, the real number line, but there's a lot of structure there. And uh, there are lots of problems that, uh, that arise from studying the structure of the real number line. So, and it doesn't just mean you just study the, the, the line. There are functions on the line. There are subsets of the line. There are all types of properties that we still don't know a lot about. So, um, so in a nutshell, yes, my, my, my interest and my, my work has been on trying to understand, at least recently, what the structure of the real number line and functions on the real number line, et cetera. So I'll, I'll, I'll focus on two uh, types of things. First of all, uh, doing original math research is very difficult. I mean, it's just a challenge period. So during the time that I was in graduate school, I definitely struggled in trying to figure out what, uh, what to work on and what path to follow. I did fine in my written and oral exams. Um, and then once I started doing research and it was very difficult, my advisor was someone that really believed in allowing his students to look for problems on their own and to try to find their own place within the mathematics that they were eventually going to do. So he wasn't the type of advisor who would say, well, here's a problem that I think that you can work on and you should be able to make some progress on it. So I definitely struggled trying to find my place within the mathematical field, trying to find what I was going to work on as, um, as a researcher. So I probably fumbled for a couple of years just trying to figure out what, what problem I wanted to, to try to tackle. In fact, I worked on one problem probably for close to two years, and I learned a lot of things, but I didn't make much progress on the problem. But the things that I learned ended up being very important for my eventual PhD. So I think that um, there were certainly, and, and that has happened in other times of my career as well, where I start trying to learn something about a particular topic, and it's very difficult. And I struggle, perhaps I tackle a problem, and I realize that, hey, you know, I, I really can't do this. But then what I learned through that process ends up being useful in other contexts. Uh, you know, you don't know what theorem you're trying to prove until you've actually proved it, right? So you don't know what you have to throw in there. Um, so so I, I, I'll, I'll mention uh, things in that direction. And then the other part that I think is a challenge for um, ethnic minority mathematicians is, or for mathematicians that don't fit the, the, the norm, whatever that is, although that's changing, all the time is just this, uh, trying to find a sense of belonging. Um, when, when I was in graduate school at Berkeley, there were very few ethnic minority uh, students in the math graduate program. So trying to find a niche, a, a place of belonging is a challenge. And that continued throughout my career when I became a tenure track faculty member at Loyola Marymount University. I was the first ethnic minority person hired into the College of Science and Engineering. So you, you, you end up being, you end up doing a lot of firsts. Uh, as a, both as a, as, a, as a woman mathematician, as an ethnic minority mathematician, you end up being in, in situations where uh, you're not part of the majority or the, main, the, the quote unquote mainstream. So trying to find a, 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 a sense of belonging in the math community um, has been a challenge at different points in my career. 
that's why some of the folks that uh, you know that we talked about earlier, Ricardo, uh, Victor, La, uh, Lisa, and, and lots of others, have played such a crucial role in my own um, development as a as a mathematician, as a professional, because you are able to eventually find a community of folks that you 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 connect with and that are able to help you to feel confident about yourself and to move your career forward. I think my proudest accomplishments have been in the mentoring uh, part of, of, of my work. So I've been fortunate to be involved with a couple of undergraduate summer research programs, uh, the Summer Institute for Mathematics, Summer Institute in Mathematics for Undergraduates at the University of Puerto Rico, Macau, and then the MSRI UP program. So I've been fortunate to be involved in both of those, founding those, both of those programs, and then seeing those programs, uh, helping both of those programs to grow. So I'm, I'm very proud of the number of students that went through those programs and the mentorship we provided, the guidance we provided, the, the push we provided for some of those students who have themselves gone on to successful mathematical careers. So, um, so it's been really uh, fantastic to see some of those students be now be faculty at different places. And in fact, I remember um, one of my very first research students, her name is Rebecca Garcia. She's at um, Sam Houston State. So she was an undergraduate with me at Loyola Marymount University. And then she was a TA in the Puerto Rico program. And then she went on to found her own undergraduate uh, research program at the University of Hawaii Hilo for a few years. And I remember way, way back just thinking, you know, the best thing that could ever happen to me is I'll be running a summer program and I'll make an offer to a student and that student will turn me down so that they can go to a program that is being run by someone that I've mentored. And that actually happened. So there was a time when I, we made a program, uh, actually an offer to MSRI up to an undergraduate student and that undergraduate student turned us down to go to Rebecca's program. That was like the ultimate. You know, I wouldn't say that I had um, a particular role model in my career, but there have been folks that I've met throughout my, my when, both when I was a student and also as a, a, a mathematician, where I would see a person or see the work that a person was doing and say, wow, that's wonderful. I hope I'm able to contribute in that particular way. Uh, I've met folks throughout the years, both collaborators and then other people who, um, who have been doing amazing work and it's just been something that I've looked at and said, I hope to be able to contribute in that particular way. And you know, some of the folks that we chatted about already, uh, Ricardo Cortez, Victor Moll, Lisa Fauci, Richard Tapia, uh, mathematician by the name of Carl Fraser, who I think is retired now, Bill Velez. So there's been a collection of folks that have, um, have influenced me and or who I've looked up to, Cora Sadowski, um, so there's been a collection of folks whose work I've admired and thought about, well, if I can contribute in one way or another, the way that these folks are contributing, that would be fantastic. And then also there are, you know, a lot of inspiration for me has come from students as well, from seeing students grow. So there's been a lot of inspiration in that way also. You know, my words of wisdom would be to be curious, just, uh, Look at things that you don't understand. Try to understand them a little bit more. Ask questions. Uh, share that curiosity, that excitement, um, those doubts with others. As I mentioned earlier, mathematics is not a solitary endeavor. It's really uh, uh, a team effort. So uh, when, you, when you run across a problem that you can't solve or when you fail at something, share it with someone. One of the things I tell um, tenure track faculty members is, you know, when you have that terrible differential equations lecture, go back to your office and share it with, or to your department and share it with your colleague. Just say, oh, I just blew this lecture. I, nobody was understanding me. And at the same time, you know, when you have that wonderful uh, classroom moment or you just, your paper just got accepted, then walk down the hall and just tell your colleague, hey, my paper just got accepted in this particular journal. So just trying to, um, uh, I encourage folks to really be, make a conscious effort to share the joys and, and, and challenges of being a mathematician, because there are both, uh, probably equally, you know, there are going to be a lot of joys and also a lot of uh, times of frustration and challenge. So uh, be curious, share what you know, share your struggles, share your successes, 
and try to enjoy the journey. Um, you, you never stop developing as a mathematician. So you're always looking, you're always learning new things. And sometimes, uh, and, and pay attention to, to small things. Sometimes I've found specific small things that end up leading me into rabbit holes and they end up, uh, I end up learning things and sometimes I end up finding something new. 